This is going to be a quick little tips and trip fit. Sounds like Boris Johnson. <laughs> I'm Nai from Finale Guitar in Sheffield and you're watching my channel Folk Friend, your one-stop shop for Celtic backing guitar tutorials. In today's video I'm going to be showing you a very quick little way that you can quickly and easily finger pick jigs. So this is something for people perhaps who've come from more of a classical background or who are just looking for a quieter, more measured sort of accompaniment than the big chunky brash strumming patterns that I normally advocate. So what we're going to be covering today is something that sounds a little bit like this. That kind of thing. The actual picking pattern for your right hand is very, very simple. What you need to do is get your three strongest fingers, the three in the middle there, um, and assign one each to the top three strings of your guitar, so that you've got your ring finger on the top E string, your middle finger on the B string, and your index finger on the G string. And you're going to aim to kind of keep your hand with um, the wrist hovering a fair way above the strings, so that there's no muting going on. Um, the fingers coming down slightly curled like that onto the strings and when they're not plucking anything you just rest them on the relevant string so that you know they're going to be ready to go when you need them. And then your thumb is always going to sit on one of the bottom three strings. Depending what your root note is you're going to move that between those bottom three strings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a chord progression that will fit nicely with my tune loop out on the ocean which you can find linked in a card in the corner of the screen. I've played the tune really, really slowly so you can practice things along with it, and so this is a perfect opportunity to practice these along with that. So if you get that up in another tab, you'll be able to practice along at home. So the first step, we're going to start out with a G chord. I'm going to play what I call country G. Instead of G with um, the B string open, I'm going to put my little finger on the top string third fret and add my ring finger on the B string third fret, and that just kind of fills out a G chord and makes it sound nicer in my opinion. And then what we're going to do is put your thumb on the bottom string because that's the root note of a G chord, the low G at the bottom. And then you're going to pluck your middle finger and then your index finger. Now a jig, just to recap some music theory stuff, is a tune in the time signature 6-8, which means there are six quavers or six eighth beats for the Americans and across the pond viewers um, in every bar. So every bar goes one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, diddly, diddly, or rashes and sausages, whichever version of it you subscribe to. And so for every single one of those bars, you're going to want six little plucks. So that's one thumb, one middle finger, one index finger, that's half a bar, and then you do the same again for the next half of the bar. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to hum a little bit of the tune and I'm going to just play that along with it so you can get a little example of the first thing to practice. One, two, three, and... <laughs> etc. And you can see as I'm doing that, I'm using my ring finger as a bit of an anchor to make sure that my other two fingers always hit the right strings. So my ring finger is just sat on the top string and if I decide later on that for some variation I'm going to want to start chucking in that top string, then that ring finger is going to be ready to fire away and just twang that string straight away. Once you've got the hang of that and your right hand is getting used to the basic picking pattern of just going bong 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 like that then the next thing you're going to want to do is start throwing in some extra bass notes to make the pattern more interesting. 
So the first thing you can do is whatever chord you're on, you can play the root and the fifth. And root, fifth, root, fifth is like the most common basic bass line beloved of all sorts of music. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the case of a G chord, if the root is G, you go up through the alphabet, G is 1, A is 2, 3 is B, uh, 4 is C, and 5 is going to be D. So your thumb is going to alternate between the G note there and D, which you can find on the open D string. So your thumb can now do... like that. Now up above my head here you'll see a little chord chart which is telling you the chords for the first half of Out on the Ocean. So let's have a look at some of the other chords that are in it. The next chord is C. So for a C chord from this shape I'm just going to move the bottom two fingers up a string because that is what I call country C. Um, it's a very nice chord, it's kind of a C with some extra notes in it but we won't worry about what they are. So that gives you that. So now I'm going to do the same kind of thing, except that now I'm going to start with my thumb on the root note of a C chord, which is C, and I'm going to alternate between that and the fifth above it. So C, D, E, F, G. So I'm going to move my thumb up to the G string up here. Something like that. Now you'll notice there, um, when I'm doing the G string with my thumb, my index finger's just done the G string as well. So that might be maybe something that you don't want to do, and if you'd like to do um, something else just so that you're not plucking the same string three times in a row, then another option is um, the third, because when you build a major triad, you've always got a root, a third, and a fifth. And those are the three notes that make up a chord. The root is the most important one. The fifth just kind of backs up the root. And the third tells you whether the chord is major or if you flatten it by a semitone, it makes the chord minor. <laughs> so um, you've got three notes within your three notes within your chord. Um, and what we're going to do instead of using the fifth for this chord is we're going to play the third instead. So that's going to go. Like that. So for those first two chords we had G which was like this and then C which is going to be like that and the final chord in this little section is chord 5 which always goes at the end of sections as I've talked about in all my uh, music theory videos. You can find their links in a playlist in the corner of the screen by the way go check them out if you haven't already. So the final chord is going to be chord 5 which is a D chord I'm just going to play a standard D chord for this one. Um, and the D root note is high up. We've got a D string here, and that's the lowest pitched D that a standard tuned guitar can get. So I'm going to use that as my root note. And then to get the fifth, I'm going to go down to the A on the string below, because D, E, F sharp, G, A. So A is D's fifth. So I'm going to go like that. Um, that is going to sound good, particularly, because when I go down to that A, then it's one more step to go back to my root note of G. So altogether, I'll play you through um, what this gives us for the A part of Out on the Ocean, and then you can have a little practice at it. So, one, two, three, and... Right at the end there, I go from D back to G, and for the very last bar of the A part, we only get half a bar of D, which is... And then I'm going to just do a strum with my top three fingers and my thumb on the G, and go back to that G chord for the last half of the last bar of the A part. And the reason I do that is um, because this is a thing that you do in all folk tunes pretty much, more, more or less 80 to 90% of the time. 
um, the last bar always goes from chord five back to chord one. And that is the thing that your ears hear and they go, oh, the section's finished. I wonder what will happen next. So uh, that's a little cue for your ears to tell them something's finished. And that's true for most music as well, not just folk music. So you can experiment with that little plucking progression. Um, whatever chord you're on, have a think about what the root, the third and the fifth are. They're going to be good choices for your thumb to be plucking. Um, and you can also change between doing um, the B and the G strings like we did there, or maybe you might like to do the top string and the B string, um, or experiment with other strings and see what you come up with. That's it for today's clip. I hope you've enjoyed learning this plucking pattern with me. If you have and you'd like to learn more, then check out my other videos. I've got loads of Celtic guitar tutorials on my folk friend channel. You can hit the big subscribe button just down there in the corner and you'll get a free Celtic guitar tutorial straight to your inbox every week, free of charge. If you hit the little thumbs up down there, that would really help me out. Uh, the more people that click the thumbs up, the more my robotic YouTube overlord goes, this video must be good, I will show it to everybody else. So please hit the thumbs up, it really does help me out. I'd love to know who you are, where you're playing, um, how you've been affected by the coronavirus, whether you're managing to get some tunes in somehow over the internet. If anybody out there has found a way to um, play tunes with other people and have it still stay in time via the internet, then do let me know because I'd love to hear about that um, and any other interesting technological solutions you've come up with for new ways to play music with your friends. So yeah, hope everybody's good out there. Um, stay tuned in. Next week I'm going to be recording the other half of this video in which I'm going to show you a slightly more complicated jig plucking pattern which is a bit more funky, kind of sounds something like... I'll be running you through that next week. Um, you can also catch next week a brand new series of play along videos which I'm gradually going to be releasing over the next couple of months in which I play classic tunes slowly and show you the chord progressions in what I am going to call carry folky. It's kind of karaoke except that it's with folk chords instead. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Like I say, hit the subscribe button and you'll get that straight to your inbox. Tune in for Folky Fridays this Friday. Um, if you've got any ideas for things you'd like me to talk about, then uh, do let me know. The internet connection is going to be a bit better this week. So you'll be able to interact directly, ask me any questions you have in real time. And I will try and help you out with your Folky queries. So thank you all very much for tuning in to Folk Friend. I'll see you next week. Next upload is going to be next Thursday at half past eight. Folky Fridays is on Friday at 5.30pm UK time. See you all then.